Hello. Well, I've bought a new video recorder. I'm going to tell Mummy. You can never have enough video recorders. And this is interesting. This is a format I've never even seen before. Let's uh, investigate what's in this big box. So what have I bought? It's uh, bigger than I uh, imagined it was going to be. Any idea? Well, as you can see, it's a professional format and it's a failed professional format. Uh, this, as I understand it, was uh, JVC's attempts to muscle in on the hugely successful uh, digital beta cam market which Sony owned. So they came out with a kind of VHS based uh, digital recording. Uh, it's called Digital S, or it was called Digital S, and then it got renamed to D9. So this is supposed to be a VHS-sized uh, cassette, but it's incompatible with VHS. And I don't believe they supplied me with a tape, so I've got nothing to try it on. That's a shame, but we can certainly have a look at the machine and power that up. Uh, let's also have a look around the back. So uh, analog inputs and outputs, including uh, S video, composite. Why would you ever use that? Um, mono monitor out. That seems like a very strange choice. Why not stereo monitor out? Oh wow! You have to see the serial number. Serial number eight. Ever gives you some idea of the volumes these things were built in. It does have uh, DV in and out, so we can capture digitally from that. But where's um, SDI out? There isn't any SDI out. So for digital use, this is no better than a DV deck, which is like uh, you know a tiny fraction of the size and cost. So fine, if you're working in the uh, analog world, uh, you could put YUV in this and balanced audio and edit with this and it would be superior to DV but uh, if you were doing any dubbing, digital dubbing, then you're only going to get uh, DV quality from that and they didn't even use a large DV connector, they used the, the small one which is used typically on consumer products so it was a bit of a fail, you can see that right from the, the get-go, this, this was never going to be a success they uh, made too many mistakes right from the start. I do wonder what happened if I offered up a uh, M2 cassette to this. So I might try that in a moment. But uh, first let's power it up and also have a look inside. Well, it makes enough noise. No tape, that's true. Tracking. Seems an odd thing to see on a digital video recorder. Right, nothing much is going to happen now without a tape. What's behind this panel here, I wonder? Some time code switches and um, video control switches, uh, adjustments. Power it down. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Worryingly, there are lots and lots of surface mount capacitors. Um, I do hope they're decent quality ones. This machine has very low hours apparently. Um, and I'll have a look and see if I can find the hours meter in a minute. So looking through the boards, system and time control, audio, digital audio, PV process it says. Uh, and caution, do not insert this in the wrong slot or you will ruin it. Not sure what it does. DVIO on this board. Not sure what that one is. Doesn't seem to be marked. Analog in, out encoder, I think. And out gen or gen lock, I don't know. And then the uh, 
the connector panel. Oh look, they are labelled there actually. And then over here, analog audio, RF 1 and 2. RF processing 1 and 2. And interestingly, an empty slot, but there's nothing marked on there either, so uh, not sure what that was for. There's nothing on the board below, so uh, really, it's just a case of this is the kind of... Um, plastic work they had, possibly from another machine. Right, let's have a look at the mechanism. Is it going to be as complicated as a M2 or as straightforward as a VHS? And the answer is, uh, it's, yes, perhaps a bit more M2-like. We have arms and things here that wouldn't necessarily exist on a VHS. The head drum is uh, huge. So it has a head disc arrangement. Does this spin? No. So it's a head disc, which is a lot more like Sony Beta, actually. That doesn't rotate. That audio and control head type thing. I know it's not audio and control, but uh, looks uh, a lot like uh, standard VHS, doesn't it? There's just ordinary drive belts in here, which I'm surprised to see on a professional machine of this age. It should have uh, been designed to not have drive belts to fail. Unlike M2, it only takes one tape size. So there's no complexity there around about shifting the reels for large and small tapes. It does that thing where the uh, pinch roller is elevated and drops into place. And looking at that pinch roller, it looks basically new. I mean, that is really good condition. One thing I see there for which was typical of uh, beta cam is there's a sapphire blade there to the right of that head, which is used to uh, burnish the tape and keep off any uh, dust or loose particles on the tape, reduces head clogs. I was looking for a back, back tension band, but there doesn't seem to be one, so it probably um, works on uh, the same principle as a lot of uh, high-end Sonys and similar, where it provides back tension uh, by reverse bias of a motor on the supply spool. V2000 did the same. Well, that's uh, an interesting looking mechanism. Uh, let's see if it will do anything with an uh, M2 tape. Okay, so we have a VHS, I'm sure that won't fit, and an M2. Power it up. Start with the VHS. It's the right size. Surprisingly, it does take it in. And then spits it out. Did it give me a message? Error 06. Don't put a VHS tape in here, silly. What about an M2 tape? No. It's not accepted. So the format is more like VHS than the M2 format. How it detects whether it's a VHS or a Digital S, S uh, D9 tape, we don't yet know. It's usually on, on beta cam, it's by pins in here, so it's going to be some indent somewhere. There's a menu here, which I imagine will have to come out on the monitor, so let's connect it to a monitor. Oh, it doesn't seem to do anything on the monitor, it just comes up with um, like a menu, it comes up with DH0250. Set. Not sure what to make of that. Okay, so we go from no tape and press menu and it says DH250. And these two buttons seem to be lit, so it might be telling me to press the buttons. 
Right, I don't know what these are doing. They all seem to read zero. It's options of some sort. But nothing appear on the screen, so there's no clues. I have to read the instructions. How do we get out of it? Menu. So the only one that seems to make any sense is DH0250, which might be telling me there's 250 hours on the machine, which is um, on the heads, which is very low indeed, you know, almost new. That explains why the pinch roller is in such good condition. Well, it looks like there's very little else I can do with this machine without a tape. I am, however, assured this is a fully working machine. Okay, let's reassemble this, and uh, next thing will be to try to get hold of a tape from somewhere. So, next thing to do to this machine is to put it in my studio uh, and set it up so that uh, it can be used because it's supposed to be in full working order. But if anybody has a tape for this, uh, preferably with recordings on it, but not necessarily, uh, please let me know uh, and I can uh, uh, demonstrate it some more. Now, People have often said, you know, people who know no better, that, oh, Betamax was a failure and it cost Sony millions and it was a disaster. And that's, of course, completely untrue. Betamax led on to Betacam and digital Betacam and HD Cam. And I think it's fair to say Sony made more money out of Beta than anybody ever did out of VHS. And this is one of those attempts at uh, doing something with the VHS form factor, the VHS tape size. Uh, in professional market and it was a disaster very few people used it uh, and you can see why it doesn't really offer anything the uh, color resolution is uh, better than DV but you could achieve that with digital beta cam so why would you want to use this I can't see what JVC were thinking of I don't know why they thought this was a solution to a problem that didn't exist so you can see why it failed in the marketplace and there's another reason and it's one of the things that killed M2, really. The cassette size. VHS is too big. Always was too big. Now, with M2, they had large tapes and small tapes. The small tapes for cameras and the large tapes for uh, studio machines. Uh, and that didn't work because you couldn't get enough running time on the large tapes without making the tapes super thin and the deck very complicated and the whole mechanism unreliable. So on this one, they've gone with the one size tape, uh, which is used for uh, both camera and studio use to simplify things. And because the running speed is lower on these digital formats, it's more based on DV, uh, that one tape is big enough, is long enough for studio use. And you think, okay, you've cracked it. But then you finish up with a VHS size tape in what's supposed to be a shoulder mounted machine for uh, ENG use and, and um, uh, professional camera use, whereas Betacam had the benefit of the smaller beta size tape. So it doesn't doesn't give you anything that digital Betacam doesn't give you, and I don't see the point. Nobody did as far as, far as I can tell. The risk, of course, with studios is they could finish up with archives on obscure formats like this and then can't get enough machines to extract them and uh, do anything with them later. So uh, it was a very poor choice for any kind of archiving work. Right, let's get this set up in the studio. Okay, here it is uh, set up in my studio. Let's uh, just switch that on. I can just about reach that. Right, the next important thing to do is to test the firewire connection. So. This is um, a large to small, as I call it, firewire cable. Super careful to plug firewire cables in the right way round. You get this wrong, you blow up the firewire port. Didn't call it firewire for nothing. Oh, look, straight into uh, Pinnacle Studio, which is a suitable video capture. Capture, and what device is it called? JVC DV device. Well, yes, it is one of them. Well, that's all looking quite promising, isn't it? Um, I now have a tape on order, so when I get that in, I'll uh, demonstrate the machine a little bit more. Now, something else I bought at the same time from the same supplier as the D9 and may have been used with it is this thing. It's called a Miranda DV Bridge, and it's uh, a DV to SDI and back converter unit. 
so it performs a very similar function to the Canopus ADVC 1000s. So I've got a couple of those uh, and I've demonstrated them a little bit in the past. Something that's better about it though is it has a proper mains input so you don't have to use a special power supply. And I think it can also embed digital audio. Now a while ago I was showing a Betacam SP machine which has a digital output but it's uh, video only. It's not the SDI implementation exactly because it doesn't have embedded audio. And with this I thought, oh well I can connect the audio to this and this can embed the audio. But actually no, not exactly because this only takes digital audio in AES and then I believe it will embed it because it does have this uh, SDI to SDI feature here. Uh, so I'd first have to get a converter box to go from the analog audio output to the Betacam SP to AES digital audio and then use this to embed. No, I probably won't. But uh, it'll be useful anyway for those occasions when I have something with an SDI digital output and the customer only requires DV. Uh, so I can use this to uh, down convert, if you like, to DV. Well, anyhow, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this and uh, learned a little bit about this uh, very obscure video recorder. Uh, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. And I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.